Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble and if you wish to watch the solution to the problem, you will find the solutions to all the problems, almost all the problems, from day number 251 through 400. From day number 251 through 400. This book happens to contain exact same problems in most cases and appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Original, original solutions tend to be a little lengthier, they tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important, question, uh, impo important part of the exam, they are a very big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately, the newer book do not provide us with enough practice problem for quantitative comparisons. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Please turn to it. Please turn, we are on page number 291. Please turn to it. Page number 291, problem number 1. Problem number 1, when it was given in the exam, Problem number one, when it was given in the exam, 90% of people who had no trouble with it. 90% of people got it right. Here's what we're told. We are told that n is equal to n is more than one. N is more than one. And here's what we must compare. Column A, we have n over n plus one plus one versus column B, where we have one over one over n plus one. Now what I want you to do at this point, and I insist, and I insist that you do that, no matter how simple, no matter how silly, no matter how easy the problem may seem, no matter how silly it may sound to you that this guy wants me to pause the video and solve the problem myself, it's such an easy problem. Do it. You will learn something out of it. You will get something out of it. Do you understand? Pause the video, solve the problem, and once you finish solving the problem yourself, then the, resume the video and compare the work that you and I are going to do going to do together versus the work that you do on your own. Do you understand? I'm going to give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. I'm going to get out of your way to give you unobstructed view. Here's what the problem says. We have a quantity n which we are told is more than one. We're being asked to compare n over n plus one plus one. n over n plus one plus one. And here we have one minus one over n plus one. Here we go. Here's what's going on. Here's what's, what's going on. One appears in this column, one appears in that column. Why don't we subtract, why don't we subtract one from both columns? Let's subtract one from both columns, that one goes away. Once that one goes away, we know that this top quantity is a positive quantity because we are told that n is more than one. Bottom quantity here, n plus one, is also a positive quantity. Positive over positive is positive. But over here, this quantity is going to be negative. This quantity is negative because this is negative in the front and then we have positive over, over positive. This is going to be a negative quantity. It doesn't matter what that is. A negative quantity will always be less than a positive quantity. The answer is A. Number two. Number two. We are told that Maria, number two was 83%. Maria, we are told, purchased three pound of candy X, candy X for seven dollars and 98 cents. I'm, I'm, putting the, I'm putting on the blackboard the problem exactly as it appears in the exam and we are told that she purchased five pounds of candy Y for $10.98. 
ten dollars and ninety-five cents. Ten dollars and ninety-five cents. So she purchased she purchased three pounds of candy X for seven dollars and ninety-eight cents. We are told that she purchased five five pounds for ten dollars and ninety-five cents. Here's what we're being asked to compare. In column A, they want us to compare the price the price per pound of X versus price per pound of candy Y. That's it. I'm going to be quiet now. I want you to do it yourself and then compare your work. I'll give you five seconds to pause and then pause the video. Here we go. We are told so she purchased three pounds for seven dollars and ninety-eight cents. First of all, the seven dollars and ninety-eight cents, I find it annoying as hell. Do you find it annoying as hell? Of course you do. Don't make it seven dollars and ninety-eight cents. Don't be a bloody puppet. Take charge of your destiny. Do you understand? Take charge of the, of the exam. Make it into eight dollars. Eight dollars, eight dollars, eight dollars for three pounds. Eight dollars for three pounds is eight over three. So we're being asked to compare eight over three versus same thing here, this is $11. 11 over 5. Okay, that's it. You must always remember these questions are called quantitative, quantitative comparison, which is why we write down the word computation and we cross it out for emphasis to remind ourselves that it is not about computation. If you leave the $10.95 as $10.95 and if you leave that seven dollars and ninety eight cents is seven dollars and ninety eight cents you're not getting the point you're not getting the bloody point then you're sitting there computing everything that's not the point here we're being asked to compare the quantities so let's do that so that's essentially essentially the bottom line is that they, they want us to compare two fractions that's all it is that's all it is this this whole question is just a mumbo jumbo but they simply want us to compare two fractions so let's do that eight over three divided by versus eleven over five I don't like dealing with fractions. Do you like dealing with fractions? I hate dealing with fractions. I detest them. I abhor them. How do I get rid of this 3 from here? I want to get rid of this 3 from the bottom. How do I do that? So let's multiply both colors by 3. So the 3 goes away. I also don't like this 5 at the bottom. Do you? Let's get rid of the 5 from the bottom here. Let's multiply both colors by 5. Multiply both colors by 5. That 5 goes away. And what we end up here is 8 times 5, 8 times 5 is 40, versus 11 times 3, which is 33. 33 is less than 40, the answer is A. The answer is A. Now what we're going to do on the top here, what we're going to do on the top is, <coughs> is very similar to what we did here, we're going to do the same exact, same exact uh, uh, problem, comparing the two fractions, that is, 8 over 3, versus... <coughs> 11 over 5, but we're going to do it a little bit on a faster way. It will save us a couple of seconds in the real exam without showing all the baby steps. Here's what's going on. We start, we just cross multiply. 5 times 8 is 5 times 8, and here 3 times 11, and that's it. 3 times 11 is less than 5 times 8. That's what it is. Number 3. <coughs> Question number 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Question number three. In question number three, oh, I don't have a percentile for question number three. It's 88 percent. It is 88 percent. Let me write in my notes here before I forget about it. 88 percent of people had no trouble with it, which means it's a very straightforward, simple problem. Here's what we're given. We are told that x is an integer. We are told that x is an integer greater than 1. x is a whole number more than 1. And what we are being asked to compare is the, these two quantities. 2x plus 5 versus 5x plus 2. 2x plus 5 versus 5x plus 2. Pause the video. Solve the problem and then compare your work against the work that you and, you and I are about to do together. Do you understand? As always, I insist. I'll give you five seconds to do just that. Okay, so here we go. We see a five here, we see a two here. Why not, why not subtract two from both sides? Let's subtract two from both columns. We subtract two from both columns, the two goes away and this is going to become three. 
we see two x here and we see five x here. Why not bring the x to that side? Subtract two x from both sides. Subtract two x from both sides. So positive two x and negative two x goes away. That was the whole bloody point. And here we end up with positive five x and a negative two x. We end up with three x. You with me so far? Divide both columns by three. Divide both columns by three. Three goes away, and this becomes one. And this three is going to go away. And so essentially, essentially, what they are asking us to compare here, this thing boils down to this. They want us to compare one versus x. They want one more time. I'm going to say slowly. They want us to compare. They want us to compare one versus x after having been told that the bloody thing is more than one. They're telling us it's more than one. Of course, if it's more than one, the answer is B. That's it. Do you understand? That's all there is. That's all there is. Problem number four. Problem number four. Now listen, we're going to redo this problem. We're going to redo this problem. I don't like doing all the baby steps. This is not what you'll do in the real exam. It's a sheer waste of time with the, showing all the baby steps. Let's do this problem without the baby steps, should we? Let's do it without the baby steps. Here's, here's the first column, 2x plus 5, 2x plus 5 versus 5x plus 2. So here's the same problem without the baby step. Subtract 2 from both sides, 5 becomes 3. Subtract 2x from both sides, 5x becomes 3x. Divide both columns by 3 and we end up with 1 versus x. 1 versus x. There we go. 1 versus x and we know x is more than 1. Therefore the answer is b. Do you understand? Number 4. Problem number 4. Okay, 83% of people who took the exam had no trouble with it. 3 times 2 raised to 5 versus, versus 5 times 3 squared. Again, pause the video, do the problem yourself, and then you compare your work against the work that we'll do together. You must do this every single time. Don't watch this video in a passive manner. You must sit there and do the work. You must be actively involved in it. You understand? Just like any other learning process. I do not know why I had this urge to point out the bloody obvious, but it is bloody obvious. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause. Do it yourself. Okay, here we go. So here we have 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So far so good. And here we have 5 times 3 times 3. 5 times 3 times 3. The very first thing we notice is that 3 appears in both columns. And since 3 is a positive number, as long as since 3 is a positive number, we are allowed to divide or multiply both, both columns by a positive number. As long as you multiply as long as you multiply or divide both columns by a positive number, it is com completely legitimate. You cannot multiply or divide by a negative number. That will switch the direction of the inequality. You understand? If column A is more than column B, you're going to end up saying column B is more than column A if you inadvertently multiply or divide by a negative number. It will switch the direction of the inequality. So what do we do? We have a 3 here, we have a 3 here. Let's divide both columns by 3. 3 goes away. And here, of course, is very simple. It is 15. And what are you supposed to find here? Let's find out. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. Right there, right? we can stop right there. It's 16 versus 15 times 2. Of course it's more. The answer is 8. This is already more than 15. We don't have to worry about times 2. Number 5. Problem number 5. Number five is a geometry question. Number five is a geometry question. We are given two circles. Here is a, here is a smaller circle and here is a large circle outside. And this is center O. And we are told that O is the center of the two circles. As we can bloody well see there. They are concentric. O is the center of both of these circles. We are told that O to X is equal to O to Y, which is in turn is equal to 1. So where is X and Y? Here is, here is, your, here is, your, here is your X and here is your Y. We are told that O to X is 1 and X to Y is 1. 
Are you with me so far? Again, I did not put down the percentile here. Just give me one second. It is 84%. It is 84%. The reason why I thought about it all of a sudden, just give me one second, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> the reason why, <clears throat> the reason why I thought, <coughs> the reason why I thought all of a sudden about the percentile is because percentile tells us how complicated this problem is going to be. It's a very simple problem. You can tell by the percentile, 84% of the people had no trouble with it. Here's the problem. It's a very straightforward, simple problem. They want us to compare column A, half the circumference, half the circumference, half the circumference of the larger circle versus column B, the circumference. circumference of the smaller circle. Pause the video, do it yourself. Half the circumference of the large circle versus the, the full circumference of the small circle. I'll give you two seconds to pause it and pause. Okay, here we go. Well, O, o to x is 1, which means the radius of this guy, the radius of the small circle is 1 which means the circumference is going to be 2 pi r, 2 pi r, 2 times pi times 1, which is just 2 pi. Here, the circumference of the large circle is going to be 2 times pi times r, r is 2 here, 1 plus 1. The radius of the large circle is 1 plus 1, 2. That's the circumference of the large circle, but they're not, they're not talking about circumference of the large circle, they're talking about half the circumference of the large circle. So we need to take a half of that quantity divided by 2. And once we divide it by 2, the 2 cancels out and we end up with 2 pi versus 2 pi. The answer is C. The answer is C. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.